Uh, let's go over a little bit last night because I'm almost finished doing something. I decided to put a little something else on here real quick. Okay, but I could talk to you guys. Uh, Sean, did you get to see what was going on last night? No, no, sorry, Eagle, I didn't get. Did you guys? Uh, what did you guys cover last night? And and I tried to look up and see if like uh, how quickly recordings are being posted, but it still only has like the original ten. Uh, our first ten lessons up there, so they haven't posted anything recent. So I couldn't even look it up. Who do they got doing that? Or, or how would I be able to do it? <laughs> Again, I don't know. All good questions. I'll, I'll follow up because I, I went to YouTube today to see if I could possibly find last uh, last night's um, class that you did since I missed. And no, they still only have the same first 10 videos that uh, that we've done, first 10 classes we've done up. So that's another question I'll try and get an answer to tomorrow. But no, so I missed last night. Did you? What did you guys cover last night? We went over some... Uh... A little bit of a a recap on uh bar prefixes. Okay. It was a little intense, I believe, you know, and I got a good chance to go back over it with uh Chris and Connie this this morning. And so I think it helped them a little bit. All right. Well I'll have to watch it when they post it. I saw the I was with you uh <laughs> Monday night when you did the first you did the first half of the verb prefixes, so I'll have to catch up when they post the video. We digressed a little into past participles, but Batia, everybody. Oh, oh. Oh, Batia. <laughs> Uh, Hi, Sean. Hi, Eagle. Hey, sis. Oh. How you doing? Good. I saw your little son today, Eagle. Hey, thank you. He's like a mini me. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, like a Connie. Of you. He's just cute. Connie. Sister Connie, are you there? He's beautiful. Huh? I just saw him. He's beautiful. Sister, can you give him a little recap of what, the, what we did last night? Which one, me? Yeah, tell him what we did uh, last Barbara? night today. She didn't do. She wasn't there, so she can't oh, like this, this afternoon. Don't be scared. Uh, I'm just finished up something last real quick. Night. She was there, but she wasn't there from the beginning. But we went. I'm talking I'm about getting... what we went back over with you and Chris today. Oh. Sean wasn't here on nothing, so just give him a little foot, recap. <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> a nice little conversation. Um, oh, I'm right. We were doing um, past, uh, I want to say, oh, my gosh, verb tenses, past tense, present tense, future pat, future perfect. Oh, gosh. I don't even have my book. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I've been. I had to sew something for my husband really quick at work for work. Uh, let's see where we're at. Um, I'm way too far back. Page 20. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just so back behind. I'm running. I'm running. Um, okay, Ponca articles. I think we touched on those just a little bit. And then we did the uh, basic past perfect markers, which we decided were just like placeholders. Um, it just, it's just kind of a word that, or a, is it a word or a sound or something like a word, little word? And it tells you, um, this one says final verb. I guess that means they would go in the rear of whatever. And it tells whether or not it's first person, I, you, he, she, or it. Um, it could be, and those are singular for the first, second, and third person. And then you have your plurals like monka which would be we, you all, or they, and possibly them if in rare occasions. Um, future perfect paradigms for wadate, which means to eat something. We didn't really go over that, but that's in the book. Uh, but it kind of like gives you, it gives you kind of an example of what we had gone, gone over earlier. Um, 
the future perfects for these a which is to get something that's on page 33 we did some of those um these a tamike uh, i will have forgotten it um uh, yeah that's okay so that means that doesn't even make sense does it i will have i will have gotten it i'm sorry so that's going to be uh uh future future um how do you how do you phrase that future uh wording i guess the words in in punka mean whatever it is that's happening is happening in the future and that is like the i form a uh, singular i form okay yeah and then um let's see where else did we go future perfect markers first second third person singular and plural again uh, then there's uh where do we go we did did i mention articles we did some articles notes uh, notes to um verb prefixes uh, like let's see oh we did the v verbs i'm sorry yeah we did d verbs uh, i'm losing i'm losing it here <laughs> I have notes everywhere. Um, root verbs. I have one or did two you do the on that. You, did you do the future markers last night? Because I well, don't remember no. that. Oh, we oh, didn't, okay. but we need to, we need to well, go over them though. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we did. I didn't have my notes. I apologize no, for didn't. that, Barbara. Okay. Seems like we, we did it. another verb prefix. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go, please, Eagle. Help yourself and go right ahead and. Hope I didn't screw everybody up too much. <laughs> I'm doing good. Like I'm I said, it takes promise. time. Barbara, can you elaborate on what uh yeah, Barbara, I've, please I've elaborate gone. on what Mr. Connie was doing? Um yeah, the past perfect participles. Do you have a do you have a dictionary yet, Sean? Yeah, no, yeah, I do. I'm looking at I'm looking where Connie said, like page thirty one, thirty two. Page thirty two talking about the the um yeah, past perfect form, the perfect paradigm, future perfect paradigm for to eat something. And then I see the future perfect paradigm and future perfect markers on those yes. pages. So that's what you guys talked about last night. Yeah, so like it blise minke, I took it like I got it in, in the past tense. I took it, I had taken it. Okay. Or yeah, Nike, you had walked. It happened in the past. If you just said Mani, it means you walk. But Mani Nike, you had walked. Um, when I got on the call, it was kind of late, and there was a document up that listed all the insects. I don't know if you guys reviewed those or if that was just a document that was on the screen. Barbara, I'm sorry. I forgot to send you those notes. I got so busy, but I'll do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, no forgot. problem. Yeah, I'm just asking. I was cooking dinner and everything just got crazy. That's fine. I'll send them over, babe. Did you discuss any insects yesterday or was that just something that was on the screen? It was right, something we'll that we started this. and then Is it safe? Yeah. decided to review a little bit. Okay, now put a name in it or no, it's good. Okay, let's go. And then we also talked about cured by means of, eaten by means of, drink, drink by means of. Inide, idate, idata. Okay, we're going to go, uh, after we get done doing this one right here, we're going to go back over a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen. That 
Right here. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah, I see the insects. That's what you're sharing. The insects. There, there's a lot more than this. I'm just putting down some of them. Okay. I'm going to write those down real quick, if you would, or screenshot them or however. We're going to use them later. Yeah, looks like they're jumping and all kinds of stuff. There might be a couple of these that you might see a little different in the dictionary, like termite, uh, worm, butterfly can be said multiple ways. Uh, most of them are pretty much the same, but on that termite, it says Jean Dante. In that dictionary, it says Jean Dante. I ain't never heard it ever said that way in my life. Jean Dante means it eats wood. Jean Wood Dante eat. It eats wood. Let me know when you guys are done with that one. Eagle, you said something about Gliska. Yeah, Wagliska. Wagliska just means bug or insect. Okay. You see how I say insects and ponco? When you say insects, you don't just say Wagliska, you say Wagliska ma. That makes it insects with an S on the end of it. And so on the bottom, in that dictionary, I think it said for termite it says Jean Dante Wagliska. And like I said, I ain't never heard it called that. So I'm not gonna put it there. Oh. Hmm. Eagle, Chris and I took yep, a screenshot yep. of it. We're writing it too, just to kind of help us remember. So if ever, whenever everybody else is ready, we're ready. I'm still writing. I'm still writing too. Okay. No. Oh, she go.
progressive on Oh.
Hey, Eagle. Can you hear me, Eagle? My lights are blinking already. From, uh, yeah, bad weather. Just to let you know, my lights are blinking, so if I suddenly go away, once my computer dies, that's it. <laughs> my battery. Well, you'll be in our prayer, sister. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, it's it's always it's always at night, isn't it? Why is it at night? But thank you very much. Oh. Yeah, stay yeah, safe. Be safe. Thank y'all. I might I might be able to stay. Yeah, be safe, Connie. Um, I'm done copying, guys. Thanks for waiting. Anybody else? Let's, let's go up then. I didn't want to put a whole bunch of animals down. I don't know if, uh, if you guys want to add more, we can, but I don't want to get you guys. I'm going to put enough in there where you can start messing with them. And, and what I mean by messing with them, you know, uh, I'm going to email this to all you guys here, uh, to your emails like that. If you didn't have, if you never emailed me yet, email me. So I got your email. Sean, did you ever email me? Uh, yeah, I, I sent you I, I sent you two two emails, Eagle Rod, to your the email you gave us. You should okay. have my email. I'll send another one tomorrow just to make sure. But I did send. Okay. I know I sent two. Eagle, you have mine, right? Yeah, I do. I've, I got yeah, you, and Chris, one or two. I think you probably got both of us at one point or another, but either okay. one of us gets here, so we share. <laughs> Sean, did you get my email? This is Barbara. Oh, you know what, Barbara? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Um. Well, e yeah, Eagle Sean. has my email. Okay. Yeah, Sean, I think you have mine too, because I, yeah, I, yeah, I did get an email from you, Robin, a couple weeks back when we were talking about like things we wanted to see happen in the class, as far as like a microphone and all that, and some ideas. Right. So right. I did get one from you, but no, Barb, I don't. I never got one from you. If you send me one, it might be in your spam folder. S a s a i z at u w a l u m n i dot com. Right, that U W alumni is all together. It's all lowercase. So. Okay, I'll try again.
Honey, y'all got a spoon bill down that way? I was just gonna ask, what's a what's a spoon bill? Down here, the biggest one. I don't know, honestly. A spoon bill? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's a fish with a, yeah, a long. I'm not sure. Snout I'd have to see. A long snout. It's a fish that could get the one biggest one we've seen out here was 16 feet. Long and anyway, probably about 300, 400 pounds. I don't know. We never really did. We just cut it up and ate it. Their spoon bill, they got a, a long bill like a swordfish, but way thicker. And it's got a real big round spoon like bill at the end of it. Yeah. It says that they're uncommon in Georgia, but apparently not. <clears throat> okay, I'm I'm good done copying. Sounding good. Good enough. Thank you. No, we're waiting. We're gonna wait. I want everybody to get it down. Let me know when you guys are done. I want to, I want everybody to get a chance to do it. Like I said, you guys can visit or talk or talk with me. However, is the um is the last one snakes, or did I miss something at the bottom? Because all I'm seeing is any any kind of big snakes, and that's the bottom, right? The last entry. You know what? I gotta fix something. Or I'm still they're still doing it, Connie. When they're done, off right. Yes, anyway, that worked. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> The pig. Dude, I missed the bottom ones. I didn't see the turtle. Oh, there's more. No, we're not done yet. I didn't uh, there's some, there's, yeah. There's, there's some, some of our guys are still writing it down. I didn't see the turtle That's one. Can we? Can you shift it up no, just a little you, bit? No, because they're not done right here. I want to show you the whole oh, section when they're done right here. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you went back up. I got oh, it. I got, the snake part. I got it. Some of, us are, after that. some of us are slow. We're getting there. It's okay. There ain't no rushing this. Some of them are still riding. It's okay. Everything's good. No worries. Okay. Now what we're gonna go over an when you say when you say animal, you say Juanita. When you say animals, you say Juanita ma. Animal by itself is Juanita. Animals is Juanita ma, Juanita ma. When you say dog, you can say Shanuda or Shinuda. Horses, Shonge. Cattles, Bootsy, Bootsy. Cow or cattle is Teska. Chicken is Wajinga Sheet Day, but when you're talking like casual Ponca, when you're just referring to a bird, because that, uh, uh, in general, Wajinga just means bird of any kind. And so when you're talking in casual Ponca, they'll just say Wajinga and they're talking about a chicken. But the real way is Wajinga, Jitde. Duck, Micha. Duck, Micha. Pig, Kukusi. Mountain lion is three words. Two of the first two were abbreviated. In gone see snare there. Hang on. I'm gonna show you guys real quick.
We can't see your whiteboard, Eagle. Uh, can you just turn yours on? Try turning on your whiteboard because I'm already sharing. So if I'm sharing, if you turn your whiteboard on, it should be there. Right now, you got to join. There's only me and what there. Okay, Debbie joined and somebody else. Uh, Barbara, you joined just now. And so the correct way to say, when they say a mountain lion or a cougar, they say, Inglonga, seen de snede. But the word has been chopped up for the past couple, two, three hundred years to Inglong, si snede. Inglong, si snede. Inglong, si snede. Inglong, si snede. Excuse me. I just wanted to see, show you how that is when we abbreviate sometime and why they abbreviate them. Maybe Inglonga seen day, snare day was too long to say. I don't know. You've gotten mauled by the time you said that out loud, trying to tell somebody it was coming. Oh, it's over with. Oh, it's over with. Oh, my back. I gotta get, gotta move where I can feel comfortable. Jeez, the name of my back gets my ribs in the back. <laughs> Jeez. Can't wait to heal up. Okay, I was just showing you, that ain't, this ain't nothing. Are you guys ready yet or no? I'm I'm good for all the way up to snakes. Any big snake. Anybody yeah. else? We're good. Good, good. Don't worry about Don't them worry clothes. About Don't write don't get the, the clothes on Just do it from the turtle. Two ways to say snapping turtle, soft shell tortoise. Toad, horny toad, frog, bullfrog, tree frog. Mm -hmm. You work on it over there and I'll finish up over here.
I'm going to make a correction on this real quick. I'm sorry. I just not seen that when I heard you pronouncing that. It's not shocky on the rattlesnake, it's shaky. I apologize. Okay. I'm in. Right here, correct on rattlesnake. It's not shocky, it's shaky. I heard I heard you trying to pronounce it while I when I had to look at it. I'm like, whoa. So like she said that kind of funny. That's because of me. Just change it from an A to an E. I know that tree frog, Igor Fenishka. Yes. I told that lady, I said the quick way to say Fenishka, uh, Fenishka, she didn't like it. I, I got to watch what I say. I want to try to be mean. I just want her to know the correct way. That lady, remember she was there, Sean? Yeah, so so I, I ran in. So uh, on the way back, I stopped in Omaha and ran into um, or visited my cousin and my auntie. And I said, there was a Paniska that I didn't know because we say Paniska, not Panishka. Um, and I wanted to talk to her, but she left. <laughs> I wanted to talk to her, but she left before I got a chance, before I got a chance to speak to her. She, she is a relation of mine, um, but I don't know her personally. Yeah, I'm to be careful. She didn't like me <laughs> saying that. I didn't, I didn't mean no disrespect. I was just sounding how, how we said it. But when she said Paniska, I still understand what she's trying to say. So I was trying, I was trying to figure that out. Ego, like I was speculating, like how that became a last name. So I was thinking, what, like there was a, a Ponca man at some point named Penishka, and they just turned that into a last name for some, and started. that's how they did it. That, yes, that's how they did it in Wadigo too. Yeah, so that that's what I was thinking because you know that's a, that's a last name for our family. But yeah. yeah, you were telling me tree frog, and then I saw that it's like a name that was you. So I was just thinking they just turned that into a last name for somebody and then it went from there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm a long day today. 
Let me know when you guys. Uh, let me know when you guys are ready. When you say turtle, you can say K or gay. I heard it said both ways my whole life, so I can't say one's right or the other because some people write it. Elders are taught with a K E or a G E. And so, like on this other one, you put snapping turtle, it could be K Tatelka. Could be K Tonga. K Ha Be Don. K I'm sorry. Instead of the G, instead it'd be like a K, letter K instead of the G. It could be. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. that's why I wrote both of them right there. Yeah. A dictionary only shows the GE, I believe. Yeah, and on that horny toad. Huh? Oh, nothing. I just said I was just looking it up. And when I was little, that horny toad, I learned it all day. Don't buy. How they don't be, or some people say how they don't be. And here it says how they why don't be. We're going to come back at uh, 7 0 3. Okay, and we're good. Is there any more? Anybody? Third page. Tree for all. Hey, Barbara, are you there? Yes, I am. Just before you go, um, did he say there was an extra page or were there only two? I couldn't understand. When he scrolled down before the next page had closed on it. Okay, Clothing. so there's going to be another one. I'm putting together another PDF, but I wanted to make sure I had it all before I finished it. So um, I'll, I'll oh, send that out whenever I get done with it, if you're interested. You the best. Uh, all right, I'll see you in a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay.
Connie. Are you there, Connie? Hey, Barbie, still there? Are you back? I'm here. Do you know, um, sorry, quick question. Do you know how to leave the microphone on the screen without it disappearing in a second or two? It's like, like it, disappear, it disappears from the bottom of your screen? Yeah, uh-huh. I had that problem one day, and do you have a laptop that you can 
shrink and enlarge the size with your fingertips? Do you have a touch yes, screen? Yes, I do. I'm okay. on it right now. Try try shrinking your screen and see if it comes back. Okay. Ugh, it's as small as it will get. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> I'm even trying the two fingers. <laughs> I can make it really big and it, you know, I just, that's my problem with my microphone is because my, um, my stuff at the bottom. Yeah. Pardon? You can't see the icon at the bottom. Right. Yeah. It, it disappears. And then I can't see even myself. I can't see whether or not I've accidentally left it on, or sometimes I might miss it when I click for it. And then I can't see that my microphone's still on. And it's like, Oh, I feel so bad when I notice it. Robin, it's do you have really yeah, I, I, that's really weird because mine never ever goes away. So, are you on like an iPad or an iPad? No, Mac? I'm on a, no, I am on. I'm on a, a touchscreen laptop. It's an HP. It's actually okay. pretty new. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't. It just dis, it like it takes two or three seconds and it disappears. And then every time I I rustle a paper while it's muted, it tells me you're muted. <laughs> it's like stop. <laughs> And I'm looking, I was trying to look at the settings anywhere to see if I could see any settings that would change. Yeah, it would I've change gone back and yeah, I've gone back and forth. And, you know, you may know, you. Sh I'm sure you know more than I do. Um, but with my little bit of knowledge, I can't just dig in through. I can't figure it out. Life size is, is new to me. It's something is that's it? a little bit for Yeah, it's a little bit foreign mm -hmm. to me. And yeah. I've poked at what I can poke at. And it, I'm not really seeing anything yeah. at all to control it. Um, Isn't that the weird, weirdest thing? Yeah, and I tried to like unsize and resize, like to see if, if like making this, making it full screen versus small would make it go uh -huh. away. And it's not really making any difference on mine. Mm -hmm. Ours is, we have um, the microphone that has a mute on the Yeah. I'll tap it and think I've muted and I'll look down and there'll be a solid light and realize that I'm like, <laughs> like I really didn't want y'all hear me trying to pronounce rattlesnake. And I, I was just <laughs> trying to sound it out. But then when he was like, I'm glad he caught it because it meant he, he fixed it. Meant to be. It was meant to be. So. But yeah, I've been, I've tried to look online even and see if someone had asked the same question and I can't figure it out. I've, does it change, Connie, if you if you shrink the um, marginal tab on the right hand side with the whiteboard and all the little icons? If you shrink yeah, that, no. does the no. bottom come up? It doesn't okay. do a thing. I've tried the picture in picture on. I've tried, you know. I've tried the ellipses was what I thought maybe by the phone thing that the ellipses right. would have some settings and uh -huh, that, yeah. that that doesn't do it either. There's nothing yeah. in there really that's more about the phone call. I mean, I'm hearing like Go ahead. What One gallery year. view are you in? That's the only I'm sorry, gallery view. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. What gallery view? Gallery view. I don't understand. Like the thing beside the microphone lets you change, like whether you see oh. Eagle Big and all. Have you read you see the speaker big with all of us I around it? I don't have. I don't have that option. I actually just have my microphone. I have my camera. I have a hang up, and then I have the ellipsis. And um, I mean, I, I have a little in the corner that I can swap back and forth, you know, like, uh, you know, just like a little, just when I click on it, it gets bigger and then we shrink and then yeah, yeah, yeah. my, my picture goes away. Yeah, my picture goes completely away too. In the more tool setting, there's really nothing. Um, and I'm in um, Chrome. It almost sounds like you've got a different version of the software than we do. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm using it online. I I'm, I'm, didn't actually. Da I did download it, but I wasn't comfortable. So I didn't. I don't it. download it. I just click on my web. What web browser? Yeah. Are you using? What I'm browser? Using Chrome. Okay. Huh. I use Edge. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Barbara, what do you? Maybe. Use? Yeah. What you got, Barbara? <laughs> uh, Google. So you're using Chrome and it's not messing up with you either. So I don't. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's been bothering me because like, like I said, I just accidentally leave it on or whatever. And all I see is blackness there. I don't see anything to let me know or, to, you know, if I could see it, I'm sure I'd catch it. <laughs> but. It's okay. That's what you got us for. I'm sorry. What? That's what you got us for. Yeah. 
Yeah, please let me know, please. Uh, I've asked Eagle to please let me know, you know, because I don't want to be that one anymore. <laughs> I'm the one that initiates the lectures. That's what I was telling your husband earlier. <laughs> it's, it's always me. <laughs> I may poke a little bit at it, too, while we're getting started. Yeah, just anything you could figure out, I would so appreciate. It's just, I, I, like I said, I've looked online, like, all my question and answers and FAQs and everything else. He's in there with Grandpa Lewis. <laughs> uh, Tony, go to page... Uh... I got it. It's a song. Well, I, want, well, I want you to. I want you to read that one about. Uh, he was a, a Sioux chief named Shay, though while God gave you Shay, Shay though while God gave you Shay. Out of out of a out of a enemy, he is sung. He there's more songs about him than any other enemy because he was that good at battle. Can you spell his name for me? S with a V on top, E, uh -huh. Uh -huh. a D with a slash, O, mm -hmm. G, A, G, I, okay. Z with a a little hat. bitty uh, a little hat. V on Antenna? top, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. and then an E. Okay. I'm going to see, can I find it? My pages are different than yours a little bit. Oh, um, no. word, word, word search a Sioux war, war leader. Okay. Oh, I found it. Okay. Oh, wait. I just found, I found Hedushka songs with his name in it. I can yep, copy it's in it that now. chapter. Oh, okay. It's chapter 13. I got it. All right, please. Okay. It's the story of Seve Wagad EJ, EJ, a Sioux war leader. The incidents that occurred in this story. Yes, yes. You got it. You got it. I got it. I got it. How far am I going? How big is this? Oh, just to the song? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I can pronounce it. The story of Shadow Wagize. DJ, a Sioux war leader. The incidents that occurred in this story are cited in these songs. The following story was told by KH, which again are initials for someone's son, I think. One afternoon when it got late, everybody was sitting around. One lookout, I guess he's seen somebody on the hill moving around. They say he don't run and try to see how many there are. After a while, he tells one person and they tell another person. Those Ponkas back then can do things we don't know about, but they told those men folks at one of the other villages about those men at the top of the hill might be getting ready to steal horses or come to fight. They get ready and they all come up to that dried out pond where those enemy was hiding. Sato Wagaji's, I butchered that, men run from the area with the exception of three others who were shot and killed. They say those men mm. was trying to hide among the cattails in a dried pond. Some of them run, but they got shot. After those Ponca had surrounded, uh, Sato Wagaji was left behind. One Ponca man said, Skajaji, oh my gosh, I'm going to butcher it. Skajaji, Maji, Iga, We, Te, Adet, Amike, Be still, let me take care of this. Um, Sedo Wagaji was crawling on his knees among the cattails. He held his hands up to show he had no weapon. The Ponca man with the knife in his hand rode upon him 
and with a single blow, cut off his head. I'm sorry. They say the head of that man rolled on the dry pond bed and rested with its eyes open and looking up. The Ponca jumped off his horse, went to the head and said, in Ponca, what are you looking for? This is what I'm looking for. And he shook his head. One of the songs tell about um, the Seuss guys try, crying and weeping by saying, quote, uh, sit there and weep. You brought this upon yourself, end quote. I guess they was waiting for the sun to go down, so they was trying to steal Ponca horses. Do we have a song? Apologize for the dog, y'all. Oh, you're all right. You can mute yourself. I'm going to sing that song real quick. I'm gonna sing this song real quick. I think I'm on the right page. Hope I lost it. I found it. I found it. Shadow Kogay <laughs> The Hey, 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 she go, Waga Gije. Vie, Wala King. It says he stood there weeping. And it says, She go, Waga Gije. You brought it upon yourself. That's what that is. Vie, Awa Lakion means. You brought it upon yourself. No, she does. We got time. Is it Shado Waga Gize? Shado Waga Gize. Okay, thank you. I've been practicing yeah, in my long, head. It's a long <laughs> word. Shado Waga Gize. Shado Waga Gize. Yes, and I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that name, I don't know what it means. It's not Ponca, it's a Sioux name. Eagle, I have a question. Go ahead. When you sang the song, I heard Kage instead of Hage. Hage is to cry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm. Okay, Barbara, go ahead and go over there to uh, page 188, the trot dance. It's, it's pronounced, say song, song, what she got for. Say song, song. Trot dance, say song, song. Read it. The trot dance, or se sasa wachigache, is a style of dance classified as helushka. There is a similar dance called non-stopping 
Watigache, but it has songs without words. The Se Sasa Watigache tells the same stories as in the regular Hedushka or war dance songs. Period. Now, so right here, the songs right here sound long. That's that scout dance? No, truck. Okay. Say songs, I won't. Say songs, I won't. She got here, it says. Oh, mother, can we not on the head 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 And then it's got honor beats. Who keep them moshe? We know all the head of Oh, mother, they we know all the they hold. Oh, mother, they we know all the head of They don't even see how that translate like that. It says, this day I am the one. Yeah, I'll never say that one. So, what do you guys think about that song and the story she read a little bit? That's how that's how it was then. That's what I thought. Oh, sing her. Barbara, go to that one story where it's called like a traveling song, a traveling story. Do you have a page number? Um, no, I don't. That's all I was asking her. I don't. I'm I, the Barbara Carney. I don't know. I see. I'm gonna tell you something. What I don't agree with. Okay, all almost all Native Americans in the Northern Hemisphere and even in the Southern, but I'm just going to speak on the United States. We all have creation story, and the Ponca have a, a two creation stories. One when we came from the sky, and those that came from under the earth, and that goes to two sides of the deal. But Grandpa Lewis said that there's no such thing, but you got other people who say there is, though. So I don't know what to believe. But he said it. It's not that it's our creation story. He says it's our traveling story. So I never even bothered to look, so you'd have to just look. I'm looking in the index and I see beginning songs, cook songs, drum songs, ending songs, legend of song, There's individual songs, um, women singers, officer songs, bear songs, veteran songs. Okay, we're not looking for a song though, we're looking for that traveling story. That's what somebody oh, told me it was called. It, a would traveling. it be near the Native American church? I think I don't it's even like we got a white tail. I don't hey, know. Barbara, look, try, let, me um, let me find it. Try 318. It's a long story. Um, this is what was told to me by several people who knows about this after the Ponca came to Oklahoma in 1877. Uh, okay, there's many it. problems people faced. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, well, it's different for me. I'm on 316. But since I have an ebook, it's the Ponca Native American Church. And I thought, well, maybe it's like Parody Way. And then um, after that, they talk about uh, oh, this is Ponca religion. Ooh. Like uh, Grandpa Lewis and all that. Fireplace. I thought it would be in with the, with the religion. So It might be. I don't know. Uh, Sister uh, Barbara, Let can me you look read up that? Page. 
Can I what? Go ahead and read that real quick. To all the way to uh, hang on. Read, read what, all the way to page. Yeah, read it to page uh, three twenty one. Starting on what page? On page oh. three twelve. Oh, I'm sorry, my mic's over. Three twenty. Oh, it's really long. You sure you want? You okay? I'll start. Just interrupt me if you want me to stop. Go ahead. The Pon Ponca Native American Church. Yeah. Okay. Hey Barbara, if you want me to pick it up, let me know. We'll read half, and she can read half. The Ponca Native American Church. Just figure she might. I'll let you know, Connie. Probably the only religious ceremony held in common by many Native American, many Indian tribes is the Native American church. Historically, this religion has existed among the Ponca since 1903. The peyote meeting, as it is called, was held in Oklahoma in the late 1800s among other tribes. Some researchers believe this to be the first pan-Indian religion a movement that began in Kay County in Northern Oklahoma. According to KH, JP, NC, AMC, and AL, the Ponca learned of this religion at the turn of the 20th century and the adherents of the religion have always been minimal. JP, NC, and AL were leaders in the Native American church who conducted peyote meetings throughout their lives. In the earlier part of the century, the religion had only a handful of followers, but gained momentum in the 1920s through the 1940s. Following the Second World War, membership seemed to dwindle because of deaths, but it rose during the 1960s and early 1970s, probably due to the civil rights movement and tribal cultural awakening. Modern Ponca exponents always tell you that there has been no change in the religious practice and that the church came into existence by a mandated decree issued by tribal leadership. However, for our purposes, we intend to examine the church's origins, testimonials of its origins, and other influences of pan-Indian Indianism growth among the Ponca as well as other pan-Indian features that seem to solidify Connie, you may need to take over. Worship, for instance. I guess we froze. Barbara, you froze there. I froze. Can you hear me? We can now. Yeah. Okay. Can now. The Native American church cult has we many features. Can you hear me? We can now. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hello, okay. can you hear me? We can. The Native American church cult has many features that resemble the Christian church in modern times. The order of worship, for instance, has procedures that include prayers, songs, speeches, and announcements. Upon entering the place of worship, there is a sense of quietude, reverence, and sacredness. Teepees are usually used for the meeting. However, the Osage have or had special buildings built for the same purpose. The theological structure is such that many tribes can find commonality in the worship experience. The worship experience itself has a procedure that many tribes can identify. Most tribal religious ceremonies or rituals usually have a feature that addresses the needs of others. The religious differences of tribes were the result of their geographic location. This affected their particular beliefs in the old days. For instance, the tribes located in the arid Southwest compared to the Northern Plains had quite different perspectives on religious practices. The basis for their rites and ceremonials were specific in character and description for their particular tribe. 
the Native American church rituals encompass some aspect of the religion of every tribe. Also the phrase Indian ways, which is commonly used by various tribes, provided the means for many who wished to build fellowship with each other, with other tribes. Adopting another's religion was not an acceptable practice in most tribes, but the Indian way provided the essential standard or avenue for acceptance. Even though rites and ceremonials of tribes were different, the basis of this religion, that is, the worship of one God and certain other elements furnished the ingredients that people could easily accept. In 1964, I asked the tribesmen about the origin of the religion. They stated that they always kind of believed like that, but made little comments on origins. The cacti peyote, Lafifora williamsi, was used as a medicine in the country of Mexico long before American Indians learned of it. The peyote has a central place in Native American church meetings. Unlike the use of other herbs in healing, the peyote is a cure-all for both physiological and psychological ailments. At the inception of the religion among the Panka, many wanted to know its history. According to KH, AMC, NC, and JP, Joe Marcus, a Tonkawa Indian and staunch believer in the religion, told the following story of the origin of peyote as a medicine. There was a woman who belonged to some tribe of Indians in Mexico. Those people told this story to our people. This woman's husband died and she was grieving over it. They say she couldn't get over it and went away with her little girl. She just walked anywhere and didn't know where she was going. They say she was hungry along with her girl. They were hungry when they realized they were in a mountain. So they laid down to sleep on the ground. She'd been walking around for many days and nights. When she went to sleep, this woman had a dream and there was a person who spoke to her. That person said, I see you are tired and hungry because you have been grieving over your husband's death. Where you are sleeping, you are using a medicine for your headrest. You must get up and pray to the creator <coughs> and eat that medicine. It will cause you to get well and take another one to your people. It will help your people when they are having a hard time. So this woman took the medicine <clears throat> to people and told them about what happened to her. <clears throat> Although several tribes of Indians in Mexico have used peyote and are using it, the Tonkawa, whose original home is Mexico, are credited by many peyotists in America with bringing the religion and medicines to them. Cage also told the following story that has been shared by several men of different tribes. A Tonkawa man became a befriended a man of another tribe. On one occasion, he took opportunity to visit this religious ceremony. He asked his friend what it was that he had heard during the night. His friend said it was a drum, gourd shaking, singing. His friend told him that they had medicine and they ate it during the night. He said if a man was sick and needed help, way wa high night Nante, they prayed for him right there. Eat that medicine and get well. He said that persons who were sick always went there to get help. He said shaking that gourd, eating that drum, and singing was their ways. They talked to the Creator that way. He said, through it they all would be encouraged, get help in life. That Tonkawa man wanted to know more about it. Upate. So he attended one meeting. At the first meeting, he liked it, the way they conduct it. He wanted to take it back to his people. So they gave it to him, that ritual and medicine, and he took it back to his people. They teach him how to conduct a meeting, sing, beat drum, and all that. They say the Tonkawa people had this religion when they came into New Mexico and Arizona. They say they were friends to those Apaches and gave that religion to them. Mm -hmm. Many years later, when some of those Apaches were captured and brought to Oklahoma, the Comanche learned it from them. The origin of the peyote cult 
is attributed to a woman according to most exponents of the religion. The popular belief is that the Tonka Indians of Mexico introduced the cult to the Indians of North America. The Ponca eventually learned of the religion in Oklahoma. The Ponca referred to the membership of their church as Moncon da Teama, or those who eat medicine. The peyote is called Moncono, or the medicine. According to adherents and the elders, the Ponca became aware of the religion in 1903 when a member of the tribe brought it back to the Ponca reservation in Oklahoma. The first Ponca advocate of the religion was probably Robert Buffalo Head, a member of the Hisada clan. He was known by the tribe as a tough man. He was a fellow who enjoyed fighting and brawling. He befriended a Cheyenne by the name of Reuben Taylor and often exchanged visits at their respective reservations for periods that lasted for months. During these vision visits, they usually partied together. Taylor was also known as one tough guy among his people. As the story goes, Buffalo Head had not seen Taylor for over a year. In that space of time, Taylor evidently had joined in with his tribesmen in the NAC. It was after his induction to the cult that he got straightened out and brought Buffalo Head into a group of peyotists among the Cheyenne. Buffalo Head did not return to the Quanka Reservation <clears throat> for over a year. When he returned, he was said to be a new man who had a different perspective on life. KHNC AMC ALJP. The Ponca did not accept the religion immediately, their own religion centering on the Niniba Wahube, sacred pipe, should have prevented the entrance of any new religion. But several factors affected the Ponca people during this time. KH referred to the years between 1890 and 1910 as bad years for the Ponca. Numerous entrepreneurs, including those peddling whiskey, came to the borders of the Ponca reservation. Many men used alcohol, lost self-esteem and pride. He said, this peyote way was a good way because our people became bad people. They even kill each other during that time. So this way was good for our people. These people one time killed a man and laid him on the railroad track to make it look like the train run over him. Another time, some woman was killed. The man you named one time, Ushkadejia, rushes into the battle, was killed during a drinking party. They didn't have the peyote church yet at that time. They did have some, but some men didn't like it. So they formed a delegation delegation to send them to Quana Parker. Many Ponca had suppressed their ancient religious practices in favor of the oncoming new ways. Still, the elders of the tribe continued to caution their fellow tribesmen about accepting the new ways and the new peyote religion. AMC said to his father, Oscar Makes Cry, said, Uskonke, Adiwaga Juite, Adiwaga Zuite, Zabaji, Adi Bibaji Yatai. This situation is something we should investigate and scrutinize. We might make a mistake. That's the translation. Additionally, he said that the Ponca should be slow in accepting it if some did indeed accept it. This meant that acceptance should be based on close scrutiny of the way that was being taught and the sincerity of those advocating it. Interestingly enough, those who investigated it became the first Ponca members. However, they were rid ridiculed for practicing the new religion. Many times, the elders stated, other Ponca men would stand outside the teepee meeting place and try to intimidate them and laugh loudly. Some men who had previously known Buffalo Head as a man who liked to fight would come to the meeting place and challenge him to come out of the teepee and fight. But Buffalo Head seems to have handled it without incident. The harassment went on without anyone getting hurt, but the men scorned the new religious religionists to no end. The members were now convinced that the cult did teach a good way, 
and that the old Ponca philosophy of doing good to your fellow men was identifiable in the religion. The Cheyenne fireplace was the first to come to the Ponca. The term fireplace simply means ritual. The first members were Robert Buffalo Head, who had the first fireplace, Philip Others, Jess Waters, Charlie Papan, Ed Roy, and Old Man Little Walker. Although the Cheyenne fireplace was satisfactory to those first Ponca who accepted the religion, other Ponca were not satisfied. Their dissatisfaction arose because of the person who brought the peyote religion to the Ponca. They felt that it should have been a reputable person of the tribe. The story of the Comanche fireplace is rather lengthy, but for our purposes, it gives deeper historical insight into the bond created by our ancestral fathers of both the Ponca and Comanche tribes. Do you want to take over, Connie? If, if you need me to, sure. Um, KH gave the following account. This is what was told to me by several people who knows about this. After the Ponca came to Oklahoma in 1877, oh. there was many problems the people faced. They say lots of people died when they moved here. I guess at first they lived over near over there near Baxter Springs, Kansas, right next to the Quapaws. They finally moved over here where we live now. After they got there, they let those white people come in. When they did that, they brought all kinds of bad things with them. So many Poncas picked that up and did like the white man did. In those days, nope, oh, excuse me. Mm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just lost my place. I apologize. Gosh, what page are we on, Barbara? My finger hit the thing and I lost it. I'll, I'll take over and then you can chime in when you find it. They finally moved over here. Where yeah, I just, lived. yeah. After they oh, got okay. here. Okay, you can... good. Go ahead. Yeah, um, it says after they got here. After they got here, they let those white people come in. And when they did that, they brought all kinds of bad things with them. So many Poncas picked that up and did like the white man did. In those days, everything was hard. Food was hard to get. But our people know how to grow things, so they did that. It looked like everything was going all right until those white people came here. Many people, many men folks took up drinking whiskey. <laughs> they lived in a bad way. Many families were afraid of them. Sometimes a woman and children have to hide in the fields at night because they were afraid of the men folks. They carry guns and shoot around, so women and old folks afraid of them. They lived like that for a long time, maybe from about 1890 to 1910 or 12. During that time, there was a man by the name of Robert Buffalo Head. His Indian name was Hisagide. Hmm, Hisa he was also known as Ukiabe a man who was one of them that liked to drink. He was a heavy drinker, likes to fight. He fight anybody, not afraid of anybody. I heard he had a friend among them Cheyennes whose name was Reuben Taylor. I guess they liked to drink together. Sometimes they stay at each other's homes on the Cheyenne and Ponca reservations. It was one of these times. He saw Tigue, they went to Cheyenne County, no, nope, excuse me, Cheyenne Country, and this experience happened. He didn't go there for a long time, when he come there, he found that his friend quit drinking. It was told to me that Reuben Taylor quit drinking because he took up the peyote way. I guess he prayed to God too, and it changed his whole life. They say he took his friend Robert Buffalo Head to meetings while he was there visiting. He learned about the peyote way and learned to pray to God too. They say he stayed there for a long time. After he got back to Ponca, he told his folks about it. They don't know what to think about this. They know he always drinks and fights. You might say they were puzzled over this. So he put on meeting at his place, invited people to come there and pray. I guess his friend too brings some Cheyennes to help out. At first, some of the old, older Ponca men don't like it. They say we have our own ways. We don't like this. We don't know nothing about it. I guess some of them came out of there. Even those Poncas he used to drink and fight with, he said Teague they didn't like it. They come by at nights when they were having party meetings and make fun of them. They even mock them when they pray and sing songs. Sometimes they say to them, come and fight. You're supposed to be tough. But he would tell his group of followers, 
EA Jinga don't say anything. So this is how the Ponkas got their first Piety fireplace. They had meetings there on the Buffalo Head allotment for a long time. Those Ponka men who took it up were Old Man Little Walker, Jess Papon, Charlie Papon, Pap yeah, Papon, Ed Smith, Jess Waters, and a few others. Later on, he, uh, which is Hey, Hey, Tigre, gave that Cheyenne fireplace to several of them. Charlie Papon was a good man, kind hearted, helpful. He treats everybody good. He carried on that way all of his life and passed it on to his son in law, Willie Cry. Um, also, Norman Cry is another name, I suppose. It was done in a good way. When you give a fireplace to someone, it has to be done according to a certain way. I guess he followed that way, and Willie Cry got the right to run meetings. By this time, there was a lot of Ponkas following the Piety religion, but there were some who didn't like it the way it came to the Ponkas. They know Hesatagde hmm, and think that maybe it should be done according to those people who knew where it came from, origin. It so happened that old man Ed, Ed Packhorse, was acquainted with Quanah Parker, Comanche Indian, and he used Piety too. So old man Ed got, this, got his bunch together and went to see him. Now, right here, I'm going to tell you a part of the story I told you about once before because it has something to do with the Pody way. You know about Little Bear, Machu Zinga. It was all. It was after all those things he did that caused the Comanches to come and attack the Poncas. It was during one of the Poncas buffalo hunts when this happened. Machu Zinga did didn't go on that hunt because he was invited to visit the Omaha. They say he encouraged his whole clan, the Kida clan, to go with him on that visit. Well, it happened that the Comanches were looking for him because all of that dirty work, which is murder for revenge, he did for Whitetail, uh, Nika Gahi Uju, the main chief of the Ponca. It happened like this. The Ponca were traveling some distance from home when the Comanches came. Only old folks and some women and children were left behind. They began to kill anyone in sight. There was one Ponca woman who there who oh, excuse me there was one ponca woman there who ran from the fort and that's where some of the ponca lived then they used to have a place where they put up a high wall made of logs around four big earthen lodges were inside that fort i guess they lived like that in those days this woman she ran in the direction the hunters went she stopped on top of hills and hollered for them they say she had a powerful strong voice finally somebody heard her that man they call him waha tonga he was there, the first one to come back. She told him that the Ponca were being attacked by some tribe. He asked her a question about who was the worst one, the warrior, attacking the Ponca. And she said, um, the Ponca, translation, the one that rides a white horse, and he's the one who paints himself all red. So Wahatonga rode off, going as fast as his horse would take him. When he got back to camp, that camp was below that fort, close to the Missouri River. He saw what was going on. He began to look for that man who rode on a white horse. When he saw him, he went toward him and that man saw him coming, so he rode in his direction. He wanted to fight him and that man knows it too. He come toward Watahonga and when he got there, Watahonga threw, his, threw down his bow and arrows and walked toward him barehanded. That enemy warrior got off his horse too, came toward him with a knife. Those Comanches used to use a long spear with a loop on one end. If they can ride close by, close by you, excuse me, they can loop and pull your head off. But this man wants to fight hand to hand, you might say. He don't know what the Honga, this Ponca warrior, was a big man. They say he was maybe seven feet tall. By the time this enemy warrior find out, it was too late for him. Wahatonga grabbed him and crushed him with his arms. After that, they say he used his bow and arrows on the other enemies. By this time, the rest of those Ponca warriors got there. They were all shooting arrows at these enemies. They began to ride away, but did not stay away. After a little while, they come back holding a white buckskin up. Hashka. Hashka, excuse me. That's a sign of coming in peace. When they rode up, one of them, a man who spoke for them, he made this statement in Ponca, which translated to, we are... Uh, Padaka, we have, uh, was that supposed to be Ponca? I think it's Ponca. We have come here looking for a man. They call him Little Bear. He's the one we came here looking for. We quit. We don't want to fight you. We're going home. I guess they asked where Little Bear was, but nobody could tell them where he is, so they rode away. The Ponca camp was sad. They were 
in big sorrow over those people who died during that time. They say these Ponca came back after several weeks and made agreement that they would not fight again. They like that bow and arrow. They want to fight again. Oh, excuse me. They, I'm sorry. They like that bow and arrow and want to know how to use it. So they stay with the Poncas for several days, maybe weeks, learning how to make the bows and arrows. They gave the Poncas some real good horses for that. After this all happened, they always got along with each other. In this story, that bow and arrow is important. You must not forget that. When old man Ed, or Ed Packhorse, went to see Quanta Parker, he went with Lewis McDonald, old man Crazy Bear, and Mike Roy. When they got there, Quanta Parker fed them and gave them a place to sleep. After they settled down, they said, he came to them and asked them, okay, now you tell me what it is you want. Maybe I can help you. So old man Ed told him about the Cheyenne fireplace and how it came to the Poncas. He asked that maybe he could do something to make it right. They believed that Quanta Parker was a powerful medicine man. He told them that he can't do anything about that other fireplace because it was already done. But he said this, it's good that you came to see me. You did the right thing because I'm going to tell you a story that's connected to this pouty way. He told him that story I just told you about Little Bear. At the end of his story, he talked this way. We use this bow and arrow now for many years, long time. When we Comanches came to know about this pouty way, we use this bow like a staff. We hold it in our left hand with one end on the ground when we sing. It is symbolic. It's a source of our existence. We can get food with it. It protects us. That point to the ground and upward means that the earth provides for us through prayers and our singing to Almighty. It's important. When you use these peyote paraphernalia, you must think like that. I guess he talked like that for a long time about the peyote. We key all staff, gourd, feather, cedar, sage, drum, and drumstick. He put on a meeting for them there in the Comanche country and prayed for them. He then said to them, now I'm going to give these to you, Wikia, and I'm going to give back to you the bow and arrow. It was once used to kill animals and even humans, but now it's our staff to live by. If you use it in a good way, Almighty will take pity, provide for you, and help you in your time of need. That morning when he talked to them, he talked about that monka, peyote. He said, this is good medicine. Remember, when you use it, I'll be there too, praying for you. Some of these boys kind of misunderstood that. They thought he said, I'll be in it. That's not right. It's just like someone praying with you when you pray. In the Indian way, you pray all the time. When you eat, work, quit working, hunt, come home, visit, and so on. That's what he meant. Like, maybe I'll be praying with you. He gave them instructions to go back to Ponca and put up four meetings. He said at the end of that fourth meeting, they would know who will run the meetings from there on. He told them how to run those meetings, but they didn't do that. They wanted old man Ed to run them. Quanta Parker said to them privately, he's not the man, but if you want it that way, you can go ahead. So that's the way it was done. Old man Ed run those meetings until he went up north. He didn't come back for a long time, maybe for 20 to 25 years, but that Comanche fireplace is still here. Those Ponca who wanted satisfaction in receiving the piety religion could be content. Ed Packhorse conducted meetings until his death in 1975. He was born in 1879. The Cheyenne and Comanche fireplaces are now considered Ponca. They take pride in their leadership in the church's functions. The end. Nice job reading. Wow. You're a fabulous reader. <laughs> Thank you. Barbara, too. Barbara, you were Barbara, very, very, very good. You faced out on Barbara. She's an orator. We the huh? Oh. <laughs> and right there, that, that thing, right, that 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 the Native American church is part of a Native ceremony that also got mixed with Christianity. I don't really remember hearing that part, and there may be um, something I just didn't hear. Did it? Side note, Lewis McDonald is my, one of my grandpas. Yay. <laughs> I'm famous. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You go in that part. It really didn't talk about Christian influence on the Native American church. It's just mostly talked about it coming that up. Means that, 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 that's, that's all what that is, is. That's all what it is anyway.
Well, famous woman, you did a good reading today. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Con Connie and I are related through McDonald. McDonald was the son of a full, uh, full blooded Scotsman. They married a full blooded punk, and I can't remember what clan she was from, but. Anyway, his son was named McDonald, yeah, and I believe he was the only—he's the only son. Oh, he's the only child, wasn't he? McDonald himself. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, so anyway, so. no, his name wasn't Charles. It was just McDonald. That's what I was told, anyway. Oh, but he okay. was the only yeah, yeah, son. Yeah. He's the one. He was—he was, he was the only the son, but he had the Scotland go. Scotland. Yeah, and he had a—he had a bunch of wives and. And he had a bunch of children, but I come from his first, my my bloodline of the McDonald comes from his first child, Amelia McDonald. Connie and them come from a half, uh, half sister, I mean a half, uh, the mother, a different mother of younger children than what mine was. Right. But that's how we're yeah. related, Connie and I, to McDonald. And his punk yeah. name was Sunday Don Kuge, and then his other punk name was they knew good guy here, Buffalo Bull Chief, and some people just called him Buffalo Chief, but it was really Buffalo Bull Chief, and that's how yeah. that's how she's my sister in our punk culture. Yep. I think that was some fabulous reading, but we're going to go on and look at one song because we got about seven minutes left on that. Whoa. I, had it, I could have swore I had it marked. What and I don't know you about you on? guys. Uh, that same one. Did you read off all them names on there? Yeah, I did. I remember reading my grandpa's name. There's a bunch of them. Kwana Parker. Um... Crazy Bear, Mike Roy, uh, Lewis McDonald, um, Quanta Parker, let's see, Ed Packhorse, Old Man Ed. So, yeah, yeah, I read them all. All they gave me, anyway. <laughs> well, here, here's this. It says, uh, did you read this part too, Conan, where I said the examples of punk and Native American church songs? Connie? What page? No, I did. I did not. 328. On three on 327, it's what I was asking on here, it had all these different uh right. men on it. We we said you read that one because it's got Grandpa Lewis right there. Uh-huh. Prayer leader. Leader and participant sing one round. That's a diagram. Ruben, oh, there's oh, you mean all these names? I see. Uh, Reuben yeah. Taylor to Robert Buffalo Head. That one. Yeah. I mean. Mark Buffalo Head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read all those ones. Well, see all these ones that I'm related to. I'm gonna go down the line as that are my for my direct bloodline. Okay. Kenneth Hedman. Over at Little mm -hmm. Dance, Fritz Warrior, yep. David Buffalo Head, Mark Buffalo Head, Tom Roy, Napoleon, Sylvester Warrior, Roy Buffalo Head, Harry Buffalo Head, McKinley Eagle was one of my oh, great grandfather, no. Lewis mm -hmm. McDonald, Pete Buffalo Head, Amos Warrior. Mm -hmm. Lamont Warren, David Eagles, another great grandfather of mine. Also, Buffalo Head, Simon Horse, Simon Horse Chief, Horse Chief Eagle is my great grandfather. It was my grandma's dad. Mm. Mm -hmm. Who are you named Thanks after? Eagle? Tail. I'm named after him, Simon. 
when they named me, they named me Eagle Simon Rod. His name's Simon Eagle, Horse Chief Eagle, and his punker name's Montu Jingle. He gave me his punker name. He was born in 18, 1800. Sweet. Anyway, That's a long anyway time. Franklin Whitetails was one of my grandpa's too. Those are all the people that are related to me in here, that are closely related to me from, from the beginning. And some of these guys are probably related to you guys too, but those are all the ones. Oh, Lamont Primo, he's my my grandfather too. This first song it says, Jesus, I want you there. Connie, can you put that on the deal like how you did the other one? Connie, remember how you did the yep, other one? Absolutely. Yep. Did you just... I'm gonna do it. Okay. Okay, I'll do it right then. now. It says, holy day ho, no ho, no, 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 hey, yeah, no, hey, no, 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 Daha udani, eya na ne ho. Daha udani, eya na ne ho. Jiza za wani de ho. Daha udani, eya na eya ne no wai. And all that song says is Jesus is saved and praising you. It says that you have great compassion. You could translate it different, but and you're good to praise. It says the hun da. That means it's you are in the hun da means you are good to praise. And that's all it says. And then we got another one. We don't got enough time for that one. But those are peyote songs, and these are peyote drum. I'm going to try to get uh, my cousin to come see you do this on uh, one of these days. He's kind of a hard guy to mess with, though, sometimes. But I think that that was a fabulous read. I'm going to start uh, emailing who I got right here on this stuff. And you can print them out. But I think it's yeah, going to be good because... Videos. I'm gonna show you guys, uh, sis, how to. Um, I'm gonna put. Only thing I'm gonna do is put some verbs in there. We're gonna do uh, a few prefixes and a few suffixes, and and them suffixes are gonna be about the future tense and then the past uh, perfect tense. And then the prefixes are gonna be like words like uh, intede now, or they gon' do right now, eton, e chon now or sabaji or sabaji or mm, go and let's see what else that's all kind of stuff we get the on the front and sheepy or pido and i'll tell you i'm going to put that in the vocabulary and tell you why and and where they use that in the sentences of our ponga language and I'll have that ready for us tomorrow. Yeah, that good. Okay, uh, uh, Sean, can you pray us out real quick, brother? Yes, I can do that. <clears throat> Wakanda, thank you for this time. Thank you for all the gifts you give us. Thank you for all the learning that's going on here it's uh it's a lot but we're getting better as a group and i feel like we're making progress slowly but surely so um just thank you for the gift of companionship we we've, we've come together in this class and with eagle so i just hope that we all keep uh our good spirits and our good thoughts and just continue to learn in a good way Oh. oh. We don't have a good night. We don't have.
All right, you too. Good to feel better. Good night. 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 Good